George Strombolopoulos in the city of Calgary yesterday. Our Tara Sloan sitting down with the host of Hockey Night in Canada, talking about his gig, our national pastime, even a little fashion. I think we should start by pointing out the similarity in our wardrobe choices today. A little unplanned. I, this that we had no phone calls. Yeah. No, 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 no email, no Twitter. Uh, I want to start by uh, asking you if you remember a story. Mm -hmm. And this is that when I was still in Joy Drop, I was asked to interview the band Korn for a different show. Uh, I wasn't uh, planning on, on heading into broadcasting anytime soon, and I went to one person asking them for advice on interviewing, and that person was you. And do you remember where that whole thing started? Which venue and which band was playing on stage? No. We started talking before that at Queen's The Stone Age show. At Lee's Palace in Toronto. Well, there you and go. That's the beginning of that. I remember. How did that court interview go, by the way? That went. That went fine. Because there's two guys in that band that are easy to talk to, and two guys in that band that are difficult to talk it to. It was the difficult guys to talk <laughs> to. I think it was a good initiation into the world of interviewing. Totally. How are you? I'm good. good. So I think that's you inside. I only ever see you on Sundays, and you're outside in the freezing cold. I can live inside a studio as well. That's nice. So we haven't talked since you started your Hockey Night in Canada gig. So take us through the kind of beginnings of that. And and how much of your world has shifted since that happened? You know, I spent the first, I think all the lead up and into the first couple of weeks just ignoring what I had to do, sincerely. I just thought, you know what, I'm just gonna, I've been on TV and on radio for 22 years. I, I was a sports reporter before. I know how to talk to people. So I'm not gonna think of this as anything other than a guy going to work. Right. Otherwise it would be just too much to deal with, right? So I did that and then a couple of weeks into it, that's when I started to, to feel comfortable and think, okay, now I can add this to it, now I can add that to it. But in the very beginning, I just was like, I'm not even dealing with it. I'm not even dealing with it. It was too much. But when it was presented to you initially, I mean, fanboy George, I know how much you love hockey. I know how much you love that. Yeah. I mean, you had to have those moments where you just look around you and go, oh my God. I was in a car, I was in Vancouver, in a Whistler driving to Vancouver, and I was not driving, and I got a text message, and I read it, or I wouldn't text and drive. And then I... <laughs> I looked at this and it said, do you want to talk about hockey? I put the phone down for a bit and was like, maybe. Yeah, of course I do. But I didn't know what it was, right? Right. It never occurred to me that Hockey Night in Canada would be available. And I knew that when you got a guy who's hosted the show for 30 years and you, and you make a change like that, I know that a lot of people are going to freak out. A lot of people are going to be unsettled. There'll be lots of questions. But I, I just chose not to worry about any of it. Just go, yeah, man, what a cool opportunity. So that, that's how it happened. I, I thought about it and said, this would be cool. This would be cool. I had a couple of opportunities, jobs that I was looking at doing. I knew that I was leaving the other show in the way that I was doing it. I just didn't know where I was going. Mm -hmm. And then Hockey Night came up and I went, oh man, I'll try this because I love hockey and I love television. And the truth is, I, I think that in this era, you can have way more fun with hockey on television. It could be a more pleasant experience. Um, teams are good, teams are bad, but there's more than just what happens on the ice that connects us to the game. The start of the game is truly our relationship with it. It only has value because we love it. Right. That's it. So if we don't explore why we love it, then I'm not interested in it, right? I, and, and they gave me the, the, the platform to be able to do that stuff. So I thought, yeah, what the hell, let's give it a go. I think what struck me immediately was the comfort level that, that you had. And I think that speaks to the team that they've assembled for Hockey Night. Talk about uh, working with those guys. They're amazing. And you know, Nick and I are kind of this, you know, these two guys who came in from the outside to, to be a part of this broadcast. Kelly Rudy was on Saturday nights, Damian Cox had been a part of it, and Elliot Friedman and Brian Spear, the producer. Now, Brian, Damian, and Elliot, I all worked together uh, at a sports radio station in Toronto, the family. We were in our, I was in my 20s, I think it was 21, mm -hmm. when I first met Brian Spear and Elliot Friedman. So there was a comfort level there because we knew each other. And over the years at CBC, Kelly Rudy and I would do stuff together. I remember interviewing Kelly in Olympic Park around here, I think in 2005. And we had that kind of comfort level. So all those guys were really cool in kind of getting around us and embracing what we were trying to do. It's a real team. Yeah. Like it's a real team before we go to air. There's, there's nothing in the way of drama. There's nothing in the way of individualism. We all have our own individual things we bring to the show, but we're pals and that's really important. You can't undertake something like this uh, and enjoy it without being pals. You know? Now heading to the end of the regular season, uh, looking back, if you can right now, highlights so far? How funny Elliot is. Elliot makes me laugh every week. There was a moment, and it wasn't captured on camera, I wish it was, where Nick and Kelly, 
Aside from the fact that there are five Canadian teams in the run for the playoffs, that's incredible. There's that's that. the highlight. But on a behind the scenes thing, Elliot and K Kelly and Nick were doing a stick demo, and Elliot and I were doing Saturday headlines with our back to the guys. And Nick, I think in an, in an effort to see if he still had it, snapped a shot with this puck, and it came flying towards us. And Elliot, without even blinking, he Mr. Miyagi did it, right? Just, <laughs> that was it. He just, Obama in the fly, you know, he just pulled it out of the air. It was incredible uh, to, to watch. So wa watching Elliot show the other side of him. Right. You know, Elliot's an incredible broadcaster and a great hockey insider. But there's a side to his personality that, that we're seeing more and more, of, which I, it's been so much fun. And Nick's a bit, you know, Nick's, Nick's one of the most generous, kind-hearted people you're ever going to meet. Kelly keeps us all honest. Damien's his old, smart friend. Not, well, not old, but our old friend, mm -hmm. who's a really smart guy, who's vibrant, who knows how to push everybody's buttons. So the highlight is just how easy it's been for all of us to kind of work together. Mm -hmm. And PJ Stock is PJ Stock. PJ Stock is yeah. PJ Stock. Yeah, he goes on TV and <laughs> all the ladies and at least 10% of the men freak out. And they're like, oh my god, look at him take his shirt off. And so it's, it's pretty <laughs> funny to watch. Okay. We'll have more of our sit-down conversation with George Strombolopoulos tomorrow. He's going to dig in deep what he thinks about the Calgary Flames and their chances, and all the Canadian teams and their chances, well, at least five that are in the playoff race and making the playoffs this year.